From super mutants to talking death claws, the forced evolutionary virus has shown itself to be a source of great terror throughout the Fallout series. Its ability to turn any living being into a mass of muscle and bones with an occasional killing machine coming out the other side should build a fear of what it would do to our world. But I'm here to tell you, a forced evolutionary virus already lives among us, and it's gonna save the world. In the early 2050s, the world was ravaged by a pandemic known as the New Plague. The infection would result in intense sweating and swelling and concluding with the patient perishing due to massive external hemorrhaging. The government also reported that it could present with socialist thoughts, so if you ever had any socialist thoughts, make sure to immediately report to the nearest disaster relief outpost. West Tech was tasked with developing a cure for the plague, and in 2055 their work begun. The result of years of research and development was the panimmunity virus, which seemed to be exactly what they were looking for. The virus was able to directly edit the patient's genetic code to protect them from the new plague and a suite of other ailments. There were some unexpected side effects. The treatment resulted in the patient becoming sterile, but it also seemed to cause a decent increase in muscle mass. This unattended consequence caught the eyes of some higher ups in the US military, who decided to fund a deeper investigation. The dream was an army of super soldiers that could walk all over those damn commies. The research was continued, but the product was given a new name, the Forced Evolutionary Virus, or more commonly known as FEV. The research quickly shifted from a tool to save countless lives to a tool that would allow us to take countless more. Unfortunately, or possibly fortunately, the research was cut short by a nuclear war that left a growing number of samples of the half-baked virus strewn around the country. As the years progressed, these samples started to reveal themselves, bringing chaos in their wakes. If the human was exposed to the virus, they would not only gain a couple extra pounds on their bench press, instead they would mutate into a green monstrosity we have come to call super mutants. These super mutants have taken over large areas of the various wastelands and are a feat to be reckoned with. The science behind the pan immunity viron and subsequently the fourth evolutionary virus is fascinating and mainly revolves around your good old DNA. DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid is the blueprints to every single aspect of you. It's a string of chemicals arranged in a double helix that your body can read and do all sorts of fun things with. Imagine a recipe from a cookbook that you can read and tells you how to make a delicious beef wellington. The letters on the page form words that you can put together and form into instructions that you can then perform. DNA works in a similar way, but instead of creating a delicious filet wrapped in a golden brown puff pastry, you end up with a certain protein that you need so you just don't die. Things can get a little screwy when these instructions are funky. If you need your oven set to 375, but the instructions say 750, you're gonna have a fire and things are gonna go horribly wrong. If the proteins in your body are made from some bad instructions and they don't quite fold right, things are gonna go horribly wrong. Some funky DNA is not always a bad thing and can actually have some positive effects. In fact, the theory of evolution relies on things getting messed up. The idea is that if there's a mutation in your genes that results in you being more successful at surviving, then you will have more kids to pass those genes down to. And some of those kids may have more kids with some weird DNA that makes them more successful. And the cycle continues for millions and millions of years. And it all adds up to the DNA that you have inside your cells right now. Now evolution, it's an incredibly slow process. It's very arduous, it relies on generations and generations of creatures to live, have kids and die, hopefully, by some random chance unlocking some fun mutations along the way. Now, if only there was a way to force this evolution with like a virus or something. Boom! Forced evolutionary virus, we're back on track. The goal of the Panimmunity Viron was to modify your DNA in such a way as to make you resistant to the new plague. They did this by creating a string of DNA that allows your body to create what it needs to fight off the plague. 
They then use this virus to shove this piece of DNA inside your already existing DNA inside your cells. Your body takes in this new DNA and treats it like a new set of instructions in the cookbook. And just like that, you are no longer susceptible to the virus that's sweeping the nation. And also you can't have kids, but don't worry about it. If instead of having the strand of DNA that codes for the cure to the new plague, you make a code for some chemical that makes your triceps get pumped up like you just hit an absolutely killer set of skull crushers, you are going to start entering super soldier territory. And if you're only halfway done the creation of this new strand of mega jacked DNA, and things are very far from being ironed out, you get horrifying super mutants. And that is where we currently stand with FEV, a project that just flew too close to the sun and leaves our world ridding with monsters that threaten the safety of all those who dare to inhabit it. Luckily, we don't have anything like FEV in our world. CRISPR, it's a fun word, it stands for Clustered Regularly Interspliced Short Palindromic Repeats. And it's how we do genetic modification. The basic idea, and I know it sounds crazy, is that we take a strand of DNA that we want to do something like uh, cure a disease. We then use an enzyme known as Cas9 to cut your DNA at a specific point. And then the donor DNA gets placed in its spot. Don't worry, it's, it's not like FEV, however. CRISPR comes from a bacteria not a virus. The paper, A Programmable Dual RNA Guided DNA Endonuclease in Adaptive Bacterial Immunity, introduced the world to this type of genetic modification. And it was published in 2012? Interplay was substantially ahead of their times when they were thinking of FEV, which makes sense why it got envisioned to be a horrible step too far. When in reality, CRISPR is going to end up helping a lot of people. On December 8th, 2023, the FDA approved the first ever treatment that utilizes CRISPR. It's a cure for sickle cell anemia, which is a disease that affects approximately 300,000 newborns every year. The disease is incredibly painful and can result in death if it's not handled properly. And thanks to CRISPR, we finally have a cure. We're not stopping there, and there are people working to use CRISPR to cure a wide range of ailments from HIV to cancer, thanks to the genetic modification allowed by CRISPR. We're entering a new era, and I'm sure nothing will ever go wrong.